Welcome to the Rundown Podcast. My name is Abe Hicks, joined by my main man, Dylan Kearns. We are back better than ever. Postseason baseball is here. So much has happened already during the postseason. We got teams moving on to the uh, LDS series. A lot has happened. A lot is going on. Uh, we're going to talk all about it. Tigers on fire right now. Royals uh, ending the season not the best, but hey, they take down the Orioles who were hot. And the Padres keeping up. They're hot baseball. A lot of hot baseball going on. We're going to talk about it. We're going to delve deep into it. But first off, Dylan, how you doing? How you feeling? How you, how you feeling about the postseason so far? Well, I'm sad my Cubs aren't in it, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, very, very long conversation for another day. Um, I'll tell you what, Abe, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with the postseason, and here's why. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is what this is what MLB postseason's about, you know? You, you you go through the course of the whole season. You have your wild card rounds and all this stuff. But once they expanded the wild card rounds a few years ago, it's really become upsetting to see what has taken place, in my opinion. Okay? Because every single time, those guys put in blood, sweat, and tears. All right? 162 freaking games. 162 games. They're out there playing. They're in spring training in February. They're here through October. There's only a few months where they're not playing baseball. They play every single day outside of the All-Star break. So I'm looking at the format, and it makes me infuriated. Every single time I think about it, it pisses me off. And here's why. There should never, in any scenario, when you play 162 baseball games, that you should be eliminated in a wild card round. You should be granted a buy. There's no other scenario. They had it right a few years ago. Play the two wild card teams, you get your bid. There is no reason whatsoever that a, a, a divisional winning, like if you win your division, that should mean something. I understand if it's basketball or if it's, you know, a, a different sport, the NFL, where you win your division. I understand that because it's only 17 games. Not 162 playing every freaking day, and now you got to sit at home because a team got hot. That's just complete. No, that's not right. That is not right. I have a problem with the way that this uh, playoff format's set up. There's no, I don't care if you put in extra teams in the playoffs. It's screwing people over because it was a watered down product last year when the damn Diamondbacks moved their way on. There's a problem with Major League Baseball. I am going to have to strongly disagree with you on this one. I had a feeling you were going to pull this uh, rabbit out of the hat. Um, but here we are. Okay. You are speaking on behalf of the Houston Astro fan base. You are speaking on behalf of the Baltimore Orioles. You are possibly going to be speaking on behalf if on the Milwaukee Brewers if they don't close it out here. Here's why I disagree. People only complain when their team gets eliminated after. I haven't seen anybody complain prior to the postseason. Okay, you? Okay, I haven't seen anybody else uh, complain. It's only when a specific team loses, it's, oh, gosh, the whole world's burning, burning down. We have to now change the playoff format. Well, you know how to not put yourself in that position? Get one of the top two seeds in baseball. It was it was attainable for the Astros to get a top two seed. It definitely was. You can't sit here and complain about that. And another thing is, for from uh, MLB's perspective, this creates urgency. This creates action. This creates eyeballs on the game. And I like it because this is what baseball has been missing: appointment television. No one's watching at two in the afternoon because that's, you're shoving an extra wild card team in there. That's, this a is, that's a different issue. We're talking about the playoff format. This is not the issue because that, that you would not have a 2, 2 p.m. slot if it was the old format. You get one division playing at 8 p.m. on ESPN on a Monday. You'd get the next game playing at 8 p.m. on the Tuesday. And then you go to the LDS. Right, right, that's I'm a not, problem. That's, I have an issue with the time slot, but I don't think it's in. Where else are you going to play them when you make every half the league make the postseason? You, what do you mean? You can slot you can slot night games easily. Then you're competing with other games. I mean, I mean, come on. Then have then spread out the postseason. There's a way to go. Spread out the postseason. It's not going to go that long. 
there's a way to go around this. My issue is not my issue is not the times. My issue is I'm speaking on your issue with the playoff format. I think it's perfectly fine because it creates urgency, and you have more fan bases that have a shot that have a reason to keep playing in September, like the Detroit Tigers. We want to see that. We want to see that in baseball. We just don't want to see teams. All right, farewell to you. Hat tip. Season's over. Here's where I just I, I get your point. I do. It's good. Like a Tigers are a good story. Royals are a good story. Um, the Mets were a good story getting in. Exactly. Here's where I disagree, though. It doesn't. It still doesn't go away from the fact that a divisional opponent has to play a best of three. That's because in baseball, that that alone is basically a single game. You get down like that's it. You if you win your division, if you win ninety plus baseball games, I know the Astros won eighty eight, but if you win ninety plus baseball games, secure a divisional crown, and you get gifted a postseason spot because of your merit for one hundred and sixty two games, and you have to sit there and say, "Oh shoot, I have to win best of three? Come on, best of five is the minimum. If you won a hundred, if you played one hundred and sixty two games and made your way to the playoffs." That's my perspective. You can't have a team decide their fate on a best of three because some of those times, those wild card teams are hot coming in. I understand if it's two wild card teams going head to head, like Braves, Dodgers, great baseball, two teams that deserve to be in a wild card spot. Let's see which of those two go to the playoffs. That's how it should be against the teams that have proven themselves for 162 games that they deserve to have a best of five shot to advance. Because we've seen it in back-to-back postseasons where top dogs are knocked out because a team is a, not only is a team hot, but they only have to win two games. They could start, if they got one good pitcher, it's a toss-up, and then after that, fate's on their side because they have to. the other team has to dig out of a 2-0-1 hole and win two straight. Not a bad take. I tend to side on uh, MLB needing urgency. I believe urgency in the game of baseball is really good for the sport. But for those that are listening, please let us know down in the comments. We really appreciate it. Moving on to the Tigers eliminating the Astros. We're going to break down this series a little bit. Uh, but but what do you think of the Tigers' performance and, and sweeping uh, you know, a favorite Houston Astros? When Houston got the lead, I thought – Oh boy, this is it. You know, <laughs> the Tigers may not lead the rest of the postseason. That's what I thought. I thought that Houston, when they took the lead or when they when they even the game up, I thought that was their shot to go ahead and win the game. But I mean, it's it's we see it every year. Postseason heroes. How about the at bat by Abanez? Pinch hit against Hater. I mean, that's a that's a matchup that's tough on anybody, but I know he's a right-handed hitter. That's why they made the move. But I, I love the storylines here. A.J. Hinch going in. You have the Verlander situation. He was kind of cracking a smile at the end to see the Tigers celebrating. I know he didn't want his season to be over, and he was obviously not on the roster. But um, still a lot of emotions there between these two teams uh, and the players who used to play for e- each other there. A.J. Hinch getting it done in his old ballpark. Loved his postgame speech, firing up the club. Um, just a lot to go on here. But the Tigers are hot. They're one of those hot teams, the hottest team alive right now. Um, so I think, you, you know, you got an ace and if you have an ace, you have a chance. That's, that's been my slogan for a while. Now I do think they're going to shoot themselves in the foot by the moves they made at the deadline. Cause I think they could use a Flaherty or a Chafin right now. Those two would be beautiful on this team. I think it'd give them an extra shot, but at the same time, they wouldn't have got their starting shortstop and Trey Sweeney who's out there every day right now. No, for sure. And I'm going to pull up his, uh, school stats from, from his game. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, Tariq Skubal, you mentioned it. Not only do they have an ace, they have a Cy Young one. I mean, six innings, four only allowing four hits, no runs, six strikeouts against the Houston Nationals lineup. Extremely, extremely impressive. And just like you said, do A.J. Hinch, that storyline, going into his, uh, his former ball club, um, you know, beating them, sweeping them, essentially ending their dynasty. I know some people have said that. Uh, that's a different discussion. But for A.J. Hinch to have the the composure that he did, he made the right moves. 
um, going to the pin when needed to. I mean, that's a hat tip to that's a hat tip to AJ Hinch, man. And like you said, they're playing really well, and they relied on timely hits. Uh, Austin Parker Meadows, I'm sorry, uh, what a huge home run that was um, to to give them a lead in yesterday's game. Ivan, yes, you named it. That was one of the areas where I was really iffy on the Tigers. Can they get enough hits when they need it? They proved it this series. And the Astros, we harped on this at the beginning of the season, how their bullpen for the big names and the money that was spent on that bullpen didn't get the job done early on in the season, and it cost them badly uh, this series against the Tigers. I saw something, and I was like, whoa, there's just no way. The Tigers' 26-man roster, $18.8 million salary, total salary. Josh Hader getting paid $19 million. He is making more than the whole entire Tigers wild card roster. And you know who ended up on the other side? That yeah. Tigers, that Tigers lineup did. And, and that's just baseball is such a backward sport. I do not get it. Uh, but the Tigers are hot. They're hot. Uh, AJ Hinn said it. I don't know who. I don't know who. But somebody let the Tigers get hot. And if I'm Cleveland, I'm a little, I'm a little on edge right now. I, I'm definitely. I feel comfortable with Cleveland. And another team. I want to touch on this. Another team that is smiling on the inside. They're not going to say it out loud. The New York Yankees. Yeah. The New York Yankees have no excuse this year. They have no excuse. Obviously, anything can happen on any any given day. We know how crazy baseball can be. The Yankees, they're smiling on the inside a little bit. But they do know there's no excuse to get to a World Series this year. I agree. And I, I said it yesterday. I texted you. I said the Yankees are a winner of the wild card series. Like the wild card round, the biggest winner are the Yankees. Yes. And that's not to say that they don't have the most pressure on them now. Like they got a Royals team that's playing with nothing to lose. They've been playing like that all year. The Royals played them really well in the regular season this year. Yeah, they, they did. And they, I mean, I think, dude, I think one pitcher that doesn't get as much credit is Cole Reagans. I know, oh, man. They came out and shoved in the first game of their series oh. against the Orioles. I mean, I think in, in, uh, in October, me and you could pitch against the Orioles. I'm serious. I think, I mean, not to dig into that series yet, but I mean, that's, that's a problem over Let's there. Go. Let's go there. Let's okay. Let's talk about the Royals sweeping the Orioles. I think it goes to show, like you said, baseball is an interesting sport when it comes down to execution and and timely hitting and stuff. The Royals, I like their bullpen. Lucas Ersig's been a beast back there. They have two starters. And when you have two starters, you can win some series. Um, you, you have, of course, you, you sign the big pitcher, Seth Lugo. You have Cole Reagans. Michael Waka has loads of postseason experience. Um, should he pitch, um, I'm sure he'll get his crack in the DS against the Yankees. So, and the thing is, they have a superstar too, and a veteran that's won a World Series and been to another. And Salvador Perez, the heartbeat of that team. So, they have a lot of guys that you have a spark plug. You have um, a lot of players that can make an impact on and off the field. Um, but especially now, they're heady players. They're smart. They play the game the right way. And I think that's that's going to be a problem uh, for the Yankees. I think a lot of pressure's on the Yanks because not only that, uh, Cleveland's going to be still pissed off about the last time they were in the postseason against the Yankees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when I look at these series, I, the, what I always go to is do your biggest players show up when you need them the most? And for the Royals, that was the case. Bobby Witt Jr., a guy that they are paying like a superstar has played like a superstar this year. And in this postseason, so far, he came up with huge RBIs in both games. Now let's go to the Orioles here. The Orioles, big time names. Their superstars did not show up. Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson combined for one hit in the postseason. What are we doing, Orioles? You cannot win if you can't score runs, and that should that is an embarrassing performance. You're at home and you get shut out. You had really it was just one swing, Cedric Mullins, home run. That was it. That was all they got from their lineup. The pitching did their thing. They held it down as best as they could. You're not going to win games scoring one run. It's just not going to happen. Um, 
the Orioles, you know, not that they have a lot of addressing to do this offseason, but when I'm looking at the guys that you that you are paying the most, the guys that you look at as uh, the the faces of that franchise, and you don't show up, that's an issue for me. I think Brandon Hyde's gone by the end of the week. Wow. He, I mean, and it's maybe it's on him, maybe it's not, but they need something to change. I think there's, I mean, they got a new owner with right. a lot of money. Right. I, I've, I've been thinking about it for about a week now. I think there is no other place in Baltimore for Max Freed. Max Freed is easily an Oriole next year. That's uh, a good take. He's a free he's a free agent. And you think about the Braves, like Schwellenbach, they'll get Strider back, sale. I know he's old, but they're fine. Like they they are they're well off. They can still pitch um some younger guys. Waldrop will be fine soon. They're not gonna pay Freed. And Freed's gonna go somewhere that they'll pay him. I don't think Milwaukee would go top dollar for him. Maybe they would, but I think Baltimore will be all in. Baltimore, here's the thing. Not to get off on a tangent and talk about Max Freed, um, but the Orioles. What I'm saying here, the owner has money, there's an urgency, and these young players for two consecutive postseasons have whizzed down their leg. They're still wet in the bed. They need to grow up and get out of the small bed and stop wearing pajamas. You're, you're like kids anymore. Talk to the yeah. O's. You're, 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 you're at the big boy table now. It's yeah. no more criticizing over having the number one farm system in baseball. No more of that. When it's time to show up in the postseason, you don't have that excuse anymore. I think, yeah, I think Baltimore is going to move away from Hyde. I think uh, Skip Schumacher, David Ross, two guys make a lot of sense in Baltimore um, to take that spot. But Hyde, he's 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 not a bad, like, in terms of everyone's like, oh, where the heck did this guy come from? He was on big league World Series winning staffs. He was under Joe Madden, um, a couple stops with Joe wherever he was, um, especially in Chicago in 16. Hyde was a, a big focal point. He was his bench coach there um, right after Dave Martinez left. Brandon Hyde was there. They had a lot of uh, manager produced um, players from that 20 or managers um, from that coaching staff. So I, I think that, you know, he, he's still going to be a good manager at some point, but I think he, they're going to cut ties with him because that's two embarrassing performances back to back years. Yeah, 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 definitely is not out of the question. Now, you mentioned Max Freed earlier, and he was hyper emotional after in a post game interview yesterday. And, uh, Man, because the Braves just couldn't get it done. The Padres just had too much firepower. Um, looking at this series, what, what were your thoughts on Padres sweeping the Braves? I had the Padres, as you saw. The Padres are in my World Series. I got them losing to, or, yeah, losing to the Yankees. Yeah. Um, uh, two things impressed me, really. I was not shocked by the Braves. That was a lot of travel uh, going to the West Coast. That was just the way is, I mean, once again, Major League Baseball. There you go. Um, they, the, if it was two wild card teams, Mets wouldn't even been an afterthought at that point. But anyway, um, the Padres, they, they've been one of the most consistent teams in the second half. They do a lot of things well. And that's what I harped on when it came to making my pick on why they go so far. They have a lot of good starting pitching. They have a great bullpen. They have guys that can get on base and give you a good at bat like Arias. They have power with Tatis and uh, flair with Merrill and then, you get a little contributions from other people, and next thing you know, bam, you are winning a lot of baseball games in October. And the second part of my point is I love that Juan Soto trade because Michael King is an absolute stud. Like Michael King is going to be one of those guys in the playoffs that's going to go on a little run where you're like, wow, he is he's painting quarters. He had over 12 strikeouts in the win in, uh, in game one of that series. He's solid, and not not that Higashioka is a world beater or anything, but, hey, he had a couple big home runs in that series. So those are two contributors in a trade where a lot of people thought, all right, well, they're just getting pieces back and they want to move off of Soto. No, they got guys that are contributing to their big league roster, not only then in the season, but in October. So a lot of pieces on that team. We didn't even see Dylan Cease pitch. You know, you got, uh, you got Joe Musgrove, you got King. Holy crap, man. This Padres team is going to go darn far. I got them going six games in the World Series. Yeah, this is uh, – Padres, man, I, I said it in the last segment, but do your do your stars show up when you need them the most? And that's exactly what happened here. Fernando Tatis, three for three hits yesterday. Jackson Merrill, as a rookie, 
in his first postseason. It's light work for him. Huge RBIs in this series. Uh, Manny Machado had a big hit. Kyle Higashioka, you talked about him, Michael Keane. These are guys that have a lot of postseason experience being in, in New York. And for all the New York fans, they knew when trading Michael King that that they were missing out. They knew how big of a deal Michael King was. And now the Padres fan base, they've seen it all year, and now they, they're seeing it in the postseason. And like you, Dylan sees the even pitch, like what? Uh, this The Padres are extremely scary, man, and the Dodgers. Talk about pressure. We talked about it last week. The Dodgers have some pressure on them. And the Padres are playing with house money. I feel like there's no pressure on the Padres. I wouldn't go that far. Here's what here's why I say this. Because because all the all of the pressure is on the Dodgers. Everybody's looking at the Dodgers. Everybody's expecting the Dodgers. The Padres, I feel as if the Padres, I feel as if they're they're playing they're they're playing more freely and I, it felt it feels like I've seen that so far uh, going down the stretch to the end of the season. Um, Jerks and Profar, uh, Manny Machado, uh, Fernando Tatis, Xander Bogarts didn't even play that well this series, you know? And he has a lot of postseason experience. He's a big veteran. This this next series against the Dodgers is going to be a lot of fun. And I guess we can, we can slightly preview that uh, now. I... I'm big on the Padres. It, they knocked the Dodgers out two years ago. Remember that. Uh, I, I'd be really worried if I'm Dave Roberts in the Dodgers. I want to hit on two of your points. One of them being uh, Dave, or, uh, talking about there's no pressure on the Padres. I think there's some. You know, they 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 were a team that A.J. Uh, Preller, if Preller wins a World Series, man, I'll take everything back I said about throwing money and resources and everything. But here's the story with the Padres, man. Their owner dies right before spring training. Just a really sad, you know, it's just suddenly. It wasn't like it was expected or anything. It was a sudden death. So this team now rallying around um, what Peter Seidler brought to that organization. Um, and, and he had a, he was confident in his uh, someone like A.J. Preller to make moves. And he believed in him. And not only that, he believed in the team. Um, and he, he threw some money at, at big places, one of those being, um, you know, gave Tatis a big extension when he was young. He brought in Machado. He signed Eric Hosmer. He signed, you know, but, I mean, he's, he still sent, sent money out. Like, he took a lot of big swings and still rode with the man in charge right now. And I'm just – I'm so proud that they were able to still fight and put together a, a roster. And I think that's that's something that's in the back of their minds as they're heading into this series. Not only that, but – you look at the, the Dodger side of things. There is a lot of pressure there. No doubt about it. Tons of pressure. I, I don't think I trust. I think I, I would lean more on the Padres side when it comes to the pitching staff. And I, I know that that might be a, a crazy take because Yamamoto's back and stuff. No Bobby Miller. No. Yeah. Uh, gosh, yeah, I'm forgetting the name. I'm forgetting the name. Yeah. Um, Bueller hadn't looked good. Bueller, you know? Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just not good. So anyway, not not just trying to beat a dead horse here. I think, the, to your credit, the Padres are hot. Fernando Tatis, he had a lot of postseason experience in the minor leagues as well. And he's he's a gamer. Like, when it came on, it came on. He was in the Midwest League Championship for the uh, uh, Fort Wayne 10 Caps. He lit up the freaking postseason in single A that year. He's 17 years old, hitting nukes, bro, just all over the place. 18, he's hitting them to left field. He was riding that team like all the way through. Then he gets called up right before the championship. And you know what he said? I didn't want to be promoted. I wanted to win in <laughs> Fort Wayne. So that goes to show you, man, like, wow, this guy's committed to winning. He doesn't care about where he is or what he's doing. And he's shined. He's got power. He's got potential. And he's showcasing it so far. Yeah, he has that killer mentality. And he, I, I feel like he's had some really big moments against the Dodgers. Remember, uh, did he hit it out of Dodger Stadium? Yep. Yeah, so he he has some really big moments. I think this is going to be such a fun series. And this is appointment television, Dodgers versus the Padres. Yep. This is I, – I think this is going six, seven games. This is going six, seven games. This is going to be such a fun series to watch. Um, on the other side, though, Phillies or against the Mets or Brewers. We know the Brewers and Mets play tonight. I, I got the Phillies making it to the – to the NLCS, um, what are your what are your quick thoughts on that? 
it doesn't matter who wins in that uh, that wild card round. That's why I felt like it was all right to do the show today. <laughs> like, yeah. like I don't think we're going anywhere wrong with the Phillies. I think maybe the rest will hurt them a little bit. Will they drop a game? But going back, uh, DS was best of five. So I right. do, I think that suits um, the Padres more than the Dodgers. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, best of five. I so have it four or five games. Four or five games in the NLDS. Yeah, best of five definitely favors the Padres. Yes, for sure. It definitely does. It definitely does. All right, moving on to the ALDS quickly here. Uh, Yankees versus the Royals and the Tigers versus the Cleveland Guardians. Who, ever, who, who would have thought we would have three AL Central teams in the DS? Uh, Dylan, what are your thoughts on, on, on this, these series? Not only that, but if you told me preseason that one of those three teams was not the Minnesota Twins, I think you were out of your mind. Like, what? <laughs> I was high on the Tigers. I, I, I remember I said they'd be competitive this year. I believed in the Royals, and I, I know I didn't say it in the take, but remember I said I, the Royals are going to the CS a couple weeks ago. Are you going to stick by it? No, no. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't in my preview, though, so I'm not, I'm not just beating a dead horse here. But – um. The Yankees will win this series. It's at their house. Like, if they don't win that game, if they don't win this series, man, that's a problem. That becomes – that becomes the, even if the Dodgers lose in the DS as well as the Yankees, I think there's more pressure in New York than there is in L.A. There's no doubt about it. Because uh, Judge is only getting older. There's there's so much going on. There's always pressure in the Bronx. Yes, there's always pressure. That said, they're not going to lose. The Royals, I love their grit, love their mentality. They might steal a game, maybe even two. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, I like the I like the Cole Reagans kid. I think Lugo, I mean, he's been good for the most part, but there have been some starts where he's gotten rocked. So I question him uh, to an extent. I think the Yankees are just the better match team. Yeah, I agree. I think the matchup-wise, uh, uh, it'll match it'll, – go in the Yankees' favor. Give me Yankees-Tigers in the ALCS. A uh, rematch of the 2012 ALCS when Derek Jeter broke his ankle, yada, 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 and the end of the Yankees' dynasty there. Um, anyway, give me Yankees-Tigers. Ti Yankees um, this is going to be a fun weekend of baseball. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Uh, but before we get out of here, Dylan, any final thoughts? Yeah, I want to say my side of the Tigers. Oh, my bad. Um, I think the Guardians advance. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick that because in my bracket I had the the Astros surviving the Tigers. But I think the I think the Guardians advance because I look at Detroit, and I don't think the bullpen can hold up, and that's something that the Guardians have. They've seen each other a ton during the regular season. Um, if anyone's seen Scooble more, it's it's Cleveland. You know they've seen him a ton. So I think um, not only that they they know how to adjust. They know. Um, they could play the matchup game a little bit there. I think the Guardians advance, and then I think it'll be Yankees Guardians, and that's going to be great. Be but fun. I think yeah. a matchup we should a matchup we should pay attention to: AJ Hinch versus Cleveland's manager. Yeah, Stephen Vote. Stephen Vote, first year manager against somebody who is very seasoned. That is a great. That is a great, great take. So that's something that we should keep our eye on when it comes to postseason. Is a different beast. We know October baseball is a different beast. Um, but keep your eyes on that. I believe there's going to be a game where a manager wins a game for him, and I lean on AJ Hinch for that. So, so that's all we have for you today's show. We appreciate all the support. Listen, uh, if you're if you're new to the channel, please please like and subscribe. Uh, we have so much content on the way for you guys. It's the best the best time of the year. This is what we live for in the channel. Um, you know, we'll find us on TikTok, Twitter, X, whatever, Instagram, YouTube. We're all there. Uh, we love the support. We appreciate it all. Until next time, see you guys.